with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Welcome everyone to this special celebration of all saints that we have every year. And in this feast, we are remembering all of the souls in heaven. That is, all of the canonized saints whose names we know, and I think we could probably include the blesseds that are in there too. So we're talking about 9,000 souls that we actually know by name and are included in the Roman martyrology. But there are undoubtedly many, many more souls who are in heaven, perhaps having uh, passed through purgatory, the purification of purgatory first, but are nonetheless enjoying the beatific vision with their brothers and sisters in the light of glory. So these are the souls that have passed the great trials of this life. They have cooperated with the grace of God, at least to a bare minimum, in the sense that they died in the state of grace. And like I said, if they needed to pass through purgatory, they are now there. Uh, in two days from now, we will celebrate the souls who are still in purgatory. So these are the souls that have reached the end for which they have been created, and that God wills for each and every one of us, for every soul that has been created in his image and likeness. We are meant to cooperate with the grace of God to a heroic degree, right? That's the ideal, that we cooperate and practice virtue to a heroic degree and thus sanctify ourselves here in this world. As 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, I think it is, says, this is the will of God, your sanctification. So we are meant to become saints here and now in this world, in this life, so that when we die, we are heaven ready. We are already prepared to go forth to see God face to face and to receive the reward according to our merits. So these souls are resting in perpetual peace. They are as happy as they can possibly be. They had their places prepared for them beforehand by Christ. Remember, he said, I am going before you, and I am going to prepare a place for you. Christ prepares a place in heaven for each and every one of us. A different place, again, according to the will of God and his good pleasure, we are 
uh, meant to shine with different degrees of brightness, just like God did not make all of the angels of the same brightness. And so it is his will that also the saints shine with a different degree of brightness. We don't know what that particular degree might be. St. Faustina reveals in her writings that she was given a mystical trip to heaven to see her place. And as she was going to her place in heaven, she was passing by many great saints. In other words, she was destined by the will of God to arrive at a higher degree of holiness, a higher degree of supernatural charity than many great saints. Of the saints that we know who are in heaven, St. Anthony of Padua says that there are many more that we don't know who are greater than he. So who are these saints? Well, we'll find out if and when we get there. And I say if because just as Christ is preparing a place for us in heaven, so the evil spirits are preparing a place for us in hell if we don't cooperate with God's grace, if we die in the state of mortal sin. And this was revealed to St. Teresa of Avila, who at a certain point in her life was living lukewarmly. And the lukewarm don't enter heaven. This is what we know in Revelation chapter 3, where our Lord says that he will vomit the lukewarm out of his mouth. And so St. Teresa of Avila explains her trip, her mystical trip, to her place in hell that was prepared by the devils. It was this little niche, okay, disgusting in every way. Uh, she had to pass through a low tunnel and walk through a murky, muddy water that was infested with vermin. The stench was unspeakable. And when she finally got to her place, she was just crammed into this little hole. And that's where she was destined to be for all eternity if she remained in that sad spiritual state. And she said, you know what? When I got there into that place and was shoved in there, that was the pleasant part. She said the bad part was that interiorly, she felt like she was ripping herself to shreds, this constant dying. It's the opposite of life in heaven, which is eternal life, vivified by the very life of God. So each and every one of us, we're making our journey through this world and we have this choice set before us to follow God and his ways, his commandments, to uh, pray daily, receive the sacraments frequently and imitate the lives of the saints who have gone before us. For this reason, we have invited uh, all of the youth and even the adults uh, to dress up as saints because the church presents them to us as our models, as our examples, that we can imitate their virtues in this world. And also that we might have special intercessors because we are in this together. We are a supernatural family under our Heavenly Father uh, and also our Heavenly Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so we're in it together. We want to journey together. We want to pray for one another and strive to arrive at our place that Jesus Christ is preparing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.